With such a positive reception on my first bracket, let's get into round one. Hey yo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J Show, and today we're gonna be covering round one of the bracket. If you haven't seen the pre-games, I'll be putting that in the description and card. Also, I may be a little brief on the ones I already talked about as there are certain matches that involve episodes I already talked about at length in the pre-games. However, there are some matches that I haven't talked about either episode yet, so pardon the brevity on those. So let's get straight into it. The first one we have here is Mermaid Man and Barnacle boy versus valentine's day i have been alerted in the comments before that the reason why the paper is so rare to see is because it was paired up with the valentine's day episode which is really rare because it only plays on valentine's day valentine's day is a pretty neat episode though revolving around the holiday because it handles the topic quite well and i definitely enjoy the theme of friendly love and it balances with comedy very well like mount climb up and fall off for example or the way an angered patrick couldn't lift up a giant swinging ride now some people may be turned off by Patrick's reactions, but Spongebob built up, at least according to the episode, that he had a better gift for Patrick than a handshake. Even the reaction of the sea star as Spongebob is just having a great day at the carnival, especially the roller coaster scene, is very humorous. The climax of the episode was very well handled, with how the clams and giant balloons sort of come together. The ending could have been a little bit of a burn off, and I chalked it up to having Patrick be stubborn, which gives his character flaws, which is a good thing, and it has this sort of complete full circle feel to towards it. Would I say this episode is better than Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy? Well, it's hard to say because one is a holiday episode with a very rigid theme to work with. I love both episodes a lot, but I would go back to watch Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy a lot more often than I would Valentine's Day. Plus, the comedy was much better as I explained the first time. Bubble Sand versus Pickles. Now, although Bubble Sand and Hall Monitor were a lot closer as to which one I would vote for, I think this one is going to be a little bit of a bigger sweep than you may think. I thoroughly I thoroughly enjoy Pickles a lot more than Bubble Sand, as although it has creativity behind it, Bubble Sand, Pickles had better comedy, a better story, and actually tied it around a memorable side character that comes back quite a bit of times. I definitely enjoyed the manipulation of the antagonist, Bubble Bass, and how he actually did have everyone fooled. Also, the townsfolk added a nice subtle boost to why I enjoy this episode. Side note, why would Bubble Bass eat car keys? Anyway, overall, I would say Pickles is very good, as you would expect me to say, based off of what I'm saying, and it still holds up today, whereas Bubble Stan, it's less memorable, it was just up against another less memorable episode. Now, just because I think Pickles is a great episode doesn't mean that Bubble Stan is a bad episode. It just doesn't have some of the memorable qualities that Pickles has. I think one of the only things Bubble Stan does better than Pickles is that it retains a lot of neat animation that a lot of season one episodes don't really focus on that I appreciate, and I do find it a little underrated. Employee of the Month versus Sleepy Time. Sleepy time is an episode I don't hear talked about enough. Maybe some people would think it's dull, but it does have this early 2000s, let's just explore a topic and see where it takes a sort of atmosphere. It doesn't have too much of a defined structure to it, with Spongebob going through multiple different characters and dreams, just seeing where that goes. I love that experimental sort of feel, that still retains this aura of being a standard Spongebob episode. Now although I did enjoy the antics of Employee of the Month, I also really enjoy the antics of Spongebob messing with Plankton, Krabs, Pearl, Patrick, Gary, and the others. They also retain the personalities of the characters in said dreams, having them go through something that just screams their character. For example, you couldn't see Mr. Krabs and Squidward's dream because that isn't his goal. Some of the dreams haven't held up like Plankton's dream, for example, or Spongebob's own dream. I do enjoy the concept and like Employee of the Month, these sort of experimental freeform episodes that are highly in demand for me. However, I do think Sleepy Time still beats out Employee of the Month because I enjoy the concept and execution much better and I would much rather prefer these early 2000s freeform style that you would see in shows like Billy and Mandy, Dexter's Lab, Ed and Nettie than a simple Spongebob and Squidward rivalry. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 2 versus Culture Shock. Culture Shock was a very interesting episode revolving around a talent show around the Krusty Krab. This may also be a sweep because Culture Shock stuck to me a lot better than Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 2. Although I enjoy that episode, it just feels kind of cluttered when you put it up against Culture Shock. First, it's a shell, then you meet a 
a villain and then they're at a restaurant and then more villains and boats and although I enjoy it, it does have a cluttered feel towards it. Whereas Culture Shock is straightforward and simple with its idea and execution, which I do appreciate. I still remember all of the effort Squidward had to go through just to become the center of attention, only for it to not happen. Plus, this episode had the majestic dance, which I will take to the grave with me. Also, we have your standard SpongeBob curiosity and determination, which albeit Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 2 has as well. However, the comedy in this episode is a little more on point, especially with Patrick's laugh towards the beginning of the show. Let's not forget Gary's poem, which again, a lot of people do remember, or Plankton's plot to steal the formula. There is just something magical about Spongebob doing his job and cleaning, to which he receives applause for that I really enjoy. Unlike other episodes like A Breath of Fresh Squidward, the squid's disapproval doesn't take me out of the episode and thus not like it. I do have to hand it to Culture Shock. I was never too much of a fan of the second Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy episode when it comes to my favorite season one episodes, but I would still watch and enjoy it. Rip Pants versus Texas. Now here is a pairing that seems a little harder to accurately determine a winner. Although Rip Pants had a pretty simple, loose but effective story with decent comedy and neat song, Texas had a pretty simple, loose but effective story with decent comedy and a neat song. When you put the Rip Pants song against the Texas song, I may be in the minority, but I do think the Texas song edges it a little bit more. And I just realized how hard the quarterfinal is going to be, let alone the semi-final and final. But getting back to the point, Rip Pants had a more together story whereas Texas seemed to be a lot more loose with its idea. I do remember Spongebob trying to help out Sandy by bringing what he thought was Texas to her because he cares a lot about her. In fact, the more I think about the Texas episode, a lot of it is just a song and chase back. I actually didn't remember much beyond that. However, with Rip Pants, it's not even the best Ghoul Lagoon centered episode in season one. That going to Walking Small, so far anyway, until I get to review Muscle Bob Buff Pants, which is later down in this video. So with both episodes having their pros and cons, I leave it to comedy, which both episodes do pretty decent at. I wouldn't argue if someone disagreed and thought it was the other way around, but I'm actually going to have to give this to Rip Pants. Although I enjoy the song from Texas a tad bit more, Rip Pants is just the better of two decent episodes. Walking Small versus Karate Choppers. Ah, uh, Karate Choppers. One of the first episodes that have karate in it, although T at the Tree Dome is the first, fun fact. I am of the side that believes this episode is a giant allegory for a more, let's say, intimate relationship, and I was surprised at how many other people also believe this to be credible. The entire episode is fun, and I definitely enjoy all of the times they fight, because it is very similar to how kids tend to play around, even when things are serious, like at work. We also get the My Leg Gag, which is always a plus, as well as the drop of hot sauce. That fun fact was Tom Kenny's face. This episode personally holds up very well, and I definitely enjoy how the story progresses. The way that Spongebob was also almost fired, and how Mr. Krabs comes across works out pretty okay. However, with Walking Small, as I mentioned before, it has an incredible story and is a really great episode centered around Ghoul Lagoon, a place that we fortunately do see a lot of. Walking Small definitely has a better story and is much, much more memorable with a much better ending. So with that said, although Karate Choppers has a lot going for it, Walking Small just excels at those things much better. Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost versus Fun. Fun is one of the most memorable episodes to come out of season one, from the song to how each character acts to its ending. It has a really simple and neat story and establishes Plankton as that type of villain that isn't full on evil and he can gel well in this atmosphere. A lot of people recall the song in fun, much more than Rip Pants, much more than Texas. Oh, and let's talk about that beginning chase. It is a breath of fresh air compared to other episodes that start out a lot more calmly, like Texas, like Culture Shock, like Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost. I think this episode stands out because it shows that season one has a ton of ideas and also a ton of ways to present that idea. I just enjoy the story of Spongebob not trusting Mr. Krabs and thinking that Plankton is truly evil and that there is a good side of him. I also appreciate that they follow up on this in a much later episode like Single Cell Anniversary. They also brought back Bubble Bass. He uses his thickness and that's something I didn't think I'd be saying about a children's show. The ending was also very well made with the emotions it wanted to give off being presented near masterfully. Does it sound like I'm building up fun to be a better episode than Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost? Because I am, because it is. Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost is a solid episode, pretty good if you want to stretch it that far, but fun is an amazing episode that a lot of people remember to this day, so it's two completely different leagues. Jellyfish Jam versus SB129. Now originally Jellyfish Jam had little competition with Nature Pants, thus advancing easily, however here it is a much closer and tougher battle, as SB129 is another good episode from season 1 that I enjoy 
enjoy quite a bit. I do think the idea of Squidward being forgot in this freezer is a little silly, but it works for what the episode wanted to do. Everyone still remembers the comedic all alone, alone, alone part that still holds up to this day. I also enjoy the moments of future and past Spongebob, particularly the past better, albeit more time was spent there. I think the idea of Squidward teaching Spongebob and Patrick jellyfishing and that being the full circle of this episode was also a neat touch. Personally, I would most likely go back to watch Jellyfish Jam before SB129, although the story concept was unique for the season, it did not grasp me with enough interest, the same way that taking a jellyfish back home would. However, with SB129, I can say that I definitely enjoyed the routes it took, and it did lead to a creative episode. But if I were to pick one, just one, I would still choose Jellyfish Jam. It has the song, it has the idea, and so much more. Reef Blower versus The Chaperone. The Chaperone is an episode that I do not see many people talking about as much as they should. While it is on the weaker half of the season one episodes, it is a overall amazing season. So it's really like saying out of the millionaires and billionaires of the world, there's always going to be a chorus, but is he really poor in that particular scenario? A Pearl centered episode, it deals with SpongeBob going on a date with Pearl. And I noticed that with this episode and the Valentine's Day episode from earlier, the show knows how to sidestep obvious romance elements and plots centered around relationships or love in general. I did enjoy SpongeBob making a fool of himself, especially the whole punch bit. Personally, I still to this day remember when SpongeBob whined in the bathroom, knowing how he made such a mess of everything. Also to this day, I remember Octavius Rex, aka Long, Tan, and Handsome, who of course is an anchovy who actually talks like how the anchovies and help wanted talk. And that led me to thinking, do they all talk that way? Do only sea critters know the language of the anchovy? Would Sandy understand them? I need an episode where Sandy and anchovy speak together. And also, also, it was alerted to me in the comments of my last video that the reef blower episode was supposed to have audio in it, but there was a problem with the equipment. However, I still think that episode works a lot better without audio because it serves as this experimental piece that shows that SpongeBob isn't limited and can work in different environments. That to me is a pretty phenomenal feat and it may be an unpopular choice, but again, I'm going to pick reef blower over the chaperone. All right, so now we get the new pairs with Hooky and I was the teenage Gary. Now, Hooky is a tried and true story, adjusted to the SpongeBob atmosphere with not a lot of focus on the comedy. Whereas I Was a Teenage Gary is a truly simple story with a very weird ending as well as not a lot of focus on the comedy. Hooky has some good gags in the beginning, like with the guy suggesting Crab should take a mint after he goes out of control informing people of the Bikini Bottom about hooks. I also enjoyed the story decently enough, despite it not only being tried and true, but tired and tested because this exact same style of story comes back in another episode or two down the line in SpongeBob. The idea of Krabs informing the curious and naive Spongebob, the best friend who says it's all okay, it does work really well with the structure of the episode. However, unlike Karate Choppers, it really isn't that exciting. It's actually kind of in the same route as Hall Monitor or episodes like that, where there is a giant emphasis on the story and very little reason to go back to it. Mind you, Karate Choppers lost the walking small earlier, but I Was a Teenage Gary isn't without its problems. But before we get to that, let's talk about the beginning. It seems decent enough with an opening that's really standard it doesn't really impress me but it doesn't disappoint either it's kind of what I would call generic and I do enjoy the idea of Squidward taking care of Gary or attempting to or at least staying in the house and seeing how they'd react too bad we didn't see any of that it just kind of snaps past that to the ending now you would think with an ending like this maybe it would end with Squidward apologizing but it goes on to have the hospital involved and you would think it ends there but then it goes on to have Spongebob turn into a snail and you would think it would end there and a sort of surreal way but then it truly ends with a song and it feels like in the middle of the episode they didn't reach a certain time to be able to end it so they had to put in all this extra stuff it doesn't really feel like a whole story it doesn't feel like something worth telling and although this may be more of the disliked pile in the pre-movie I still don't think it's horrible I just think it's one of the weakest of a good season so when you take one of the weakest stories of the first season and one of the least rewatchable episodes of the first season it's honestly a coin toss that I'll give to Hooky, only because it has the better comedy. Suds versus Rock Bottom. Suds is an enjoyable episode revolving around Spongebob being sick and Patrick is trying to help him. Unlike the Splinter though, his actions here are pretty funny and they have a straight squirrel to steer Spongebob in the correct place. The story works really well and I never truly had a problem with pacing or anything. The way that the story flows is a much better example of how to handle stories like this when you compare it to Hooky. I also enjoyed the ending part with Spongebob and this live action just being cleaned as well as Patrick's part and I would
wouldn't be surprised if that's the part that everyone else remembers as well. I should also note that it is pretty clever to have Spongebob sneeze bubbles as he is a sponge. Now Rock Bottom is an example of a story structure that I enjoy because it gets straight to the point and has the main focus happen within minutes, unlike I Was a Teenage Gary. The whole balloon bit, the guy at the bus station counter, and the chocolate bar parts, they're just all amazing. I think this episode has a really great back and forth with the bus driver, who serves as an underrated role in this episode. The comedy was also great. I think this will be really hard to pick. So after some rewatching and thinking it over, I'm gonna give it to Rock Bottom. It doesn't really have that more pros than suds, and both are really good episodes. I just think I would edge it towards that personally. Pizza Delivery versus Muscle Bob Buff Pants. Pizza Delivery is a very simple episode that has the sort of creative and experimental atmosphere that I admired about Bubble Stand, as the concept itself is really simple. A lot of people remember and enjoy the part where Squidward stands up to this random guy for Spongebob, and it is a truly heartwarming scene. The way that Spongebob is just so optimistic about getting this pizza delivered is something to be admired as well. It just works so well to bounce off of Squidward's pessimism. Overall, it's like rock bottom in the sense that it gets straight to the point. It's very simple and it has a lot of comedy involved in it. Muscle Bob Buff Pants is another Goo Lagoon centered episode where Spongebob tries to fight a facade instead of tackling the problem head on, letting a band-aid suffice and building up a problem until it blows up in his face. Sound similar? That's because it's a very similar structure to Rip Pants, just without the song. Sandy is really great here, but I'm not sure if it's her best, as we have another Sandy centered episode down the line, and I really do enjoy her more in Texas than in here, Muscle Bob Buff Pants, but that doesn't mean that she's bad, because she supports Spongebob, she contributes to the comedy, and she doesn't overshadow him. The idea of anchor tossing just seems so nautical, and something that works really well underwater, and is the equivalent of javelin throwing, I'm assuming? The anchor arms also, as a whole, was a great idea, with a great execution, because I still do remember it to this day. It worked well within the context of the story, it provided creative animation opportunities, and it was just really funny to see the sponge work with. If I had to pick, I would still give it to Pizza Delivery, because of the simplicity, the focus, and the better execution, it just leans into favor as to why preseason Spongebob worked so well. Plankton versus Jellyfishing. Now, this is gonna be very tough, because Plankton and Jellyfishing are both high on my list of favorite Spongebob episodes, when we're talking about season one. So this is going to be a pretty tough pick. I enjoy Plankton for its very incredible debut of the self-titled antagonist, as well as the story, and having Spongebob act as sort of a non-threatening sort of rival. They also play around with Plankton's size and give him tons of opportunities for comedic moments, mostly at his own expense, which actually works out well. Everyone I talked to about this episode still remembers when Plankton entered Spongebob's body and responded to Squidward when he lashed out at him. I think this was a better than average episode that had both good comedy and a good story. Jellyfishing, on the other hand, has a lot of what I like to call under the hood pro, so to speak. We have a creative opening that brought you into the mood just to subvert expectations. You have the way Squidward says a lot more than he speaks in a good way. And lastly, you have SpongeBob and Patrick getting their sort of just desserts for their carelessness. Some may point out that a lot of this episode is just at Squidward's expense, but to give the man credit, we do have some moments where Squidward does try and do things with SpongeBob and Patrick. Also, there are other episodes where Squidward may not be in a position to speak. And I think this one works well. I can't speak for the other ones. It was a truly hard choice because I found Jellyfishing to be quite rewatchable just because of the whole let's call some mayhem and Jellyfish field sort of freeform innocent execution. But even with that, I think I would still hand it over to Plankton. I just think it had a better impact with me. Although if you like the opposite, I would not blame you. Boating School versus Sandy's Rocket. Boating School and Sandy's Rocket are both very straightforward episodes with a solid execution that I find to be incredibly rewatchable. Boating School is part of the first few episodes where we see Spongebob can't drive, and with a new execution at the time, I did enjoy it. I also find Patrick being an expert to be the seedlings for a later episode. So take that, continuity deniers. There was also quite a bit of comedy within the episode, like Spongebob acting natural, or Patrick's reaction to reading Spongebob's diary. It all comes into play really nicely for a solid story revolving around another story based on Spongebob's naivety, but trust in Patrick working against him, like Hookie. Sandy's Rocket is a very good episode showing how far Patrick and Spongebob will go just to have fun, even at the expense of messing with someone else's stuff. Like SB129, it has this futuristic sci-fi alternative timeline feel. Their antics when it came to being in the control room, or the zero gravity part, or just capturing bikini bottomites was also a fun experience. And lastly, when the two turn on each other, that was a neat twist, to a great ending. Honestly, I'm going to give this one to Sandy's Rocket, because 
because it has more memorable jokes and comedy. However, unlike the previous match, you can honestly pick either or. I'm just trying to save you 10 minutes of me pondering which ones I want to pick. Home Sweet Pineapple versus Tea at the Tree Dome. Home Sweet Pineapple is an above average episode, which means it's on a lower half of the season in my opinion, where we had Spongebob nearly moving out because of a nematode disaster. Honestly, there really isn't much for me to say with this episode because it's truly above average. That's it. It doesn't disappoint with a good story and Squidward's performance, but it doesn't really impress. I honestly cannot remember anything except the wrench bit or the spider bit, but that honestly could have been in any other episode. Overall, I don't think it's the best, but looking on the positive side, it does have some rewatchability. When we compare this to Tea at the Tree Dome, a wonderful episode that is a part of the very first episode pair, or triplet in this case of Spongebob, the winner truly shines. Shall I mention the part where Patrick and Spongebob go inside Sandy's tree dome without water to impress her? Or should I mention the clam fighting? Or should I mention Patrick thinking that he knows about anything related to Spongebob's problem with the land squirrel? When you consider character chemistry and everything I said before, Tea at the Tree Dome does much better. The win should obviously go there. The last pairing for today is Opposite Day and Squeaky Boots. And of course, it's going to be a hard pick because of how good season one is. Well, Opposite Day is an episode I hold near and dear to my heart to be an incredibly memorable episode and one I enjoyed right when I saw it the first time, or at least from what I recall, and I hold it in high regards like the Pickles episode. Opposite Day is one of those episodes that I think you could really only do once, not just because of the concept, but also because of how Squidward and the real estate lady perform. I think it actually had a great execution, and for such a stock concept, I think it is truly memorable, and I would even go as far as to say it's underrated. I also enjoy the beginning Opposite Day montage, as well as the ending part with Squidward and the Bulldozer. However, Squeaky Boots is a solid episode that does some things better than Opposite Day. Now, if you've been following along, you would know this is the part where I go, which had the better comedy? Well, Squeaky Boots, honestly. I know some can't get past the sound, but beyond that, it's some pretty solid jokes that I would actually go back and rewatch again. However, which has a better story? Well, that goes to Opposite Day. So in the end, it's another one of those pairings where one has good story and great comedy, and the other one has great story, but good comedy, and rule of thumb, I'm personally just going to always have to give it to the better comedy, unless the story is really that good, which neither of these are. Ah, I hate to admit it, but I think I'm gonna have to give it the Squeaky Boots. Although I personally connect more with the style of Opposite Day, I think Squeaky Boots is a much better episode, with better comedy, and an arguably on the same level quality story. Oof. All right, I think that will be the largest bracket so far. We just went through 16 pairings of episodes. So the next episode is going to have the eight winners, and then after that, the four winners. And I am debating on if I'm going to do a final bracket in the same style, or if I'm going to do a versus on the final two. As always, I would love to know what you would have picked. I personally try to read as many of those as I can, and I am grateful to know that you guys enjoyed a bracket concept. This was a really big video. What do you think is going Going to win the bracket. What do you think is going to be in the final four? As always, special thanks to the patrons that support me in the month of April. Make sure to follow me at the Alpha J Show on Twitter and go into my request video for any other topic you think I should cover. That also includes different bracket ideas. If you really like this video, I highly suggest you check out my entire SpongeBob playlist as I've done a lot of SpongeBob videos. Or if you want a specific SpongeBob review that I personally consider to be one of my favorites, try out my Patrick the Game review. As always, Make sure to subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time. I hope your time is well spent, and Alpha out.